Hello, everyone, and welcome in once again. It's time for the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. Tom Callahan here with you, joined as I am every week by River Dragons head coach Jerome Bichard. This week's player guest is Alexander Jameyev. Guys, how's it going? Yeah. Going, going pretty good, Tommy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, pleasure being back on the show. Uh, uh, Jammer, you're good. the first guy who, when I went into the locker room this year, has been like, no, I'm doing the show. I'm on. <laughs> I'm on tonight. I'm doing it. Why? Well, I hate to go... Uh, to see a strikeout you know you got two guys saying ah, three guys show. three guys said, you know what tommy wick line went out of his way to get hit in the face <laughs> the week i asked him a couple of weeks ago and then he's like oh, i can't go i got stitches i'm like okay that's valid i'll let you off Dude, the hook. that's not valid i'll let you off the hook but now i can't get him back on the hook so that's all right but uh, jam stepped up credit where credit's due oh, oh jam wants a little boom time you know yeah he does <laughs> he wants a little he boom loves time. It. <laughs> he, he wants a little boom time it. on their show that's right <laughs> That's right. Chopping it up. That's right. There's the the spotlights on on Boom all the time, and uh, you know it's it's kind of funny. I mean, we did the video earlier today, giving away the hat, and you darn near scared me out of my skin. And uh, you everybody just... needs to look at Tom's face when I kind of when I, I kind of when I kind of stole the video. I was not ready. <laughs> And I didn't know what the heck I was saying was or whatever. I, lo- right. I forgot my teeth at home. I got no teeth. Uh, I did. Uh, it, have you posted on Facebook where are your teeth? Because I know Orange. No, no. I, <laughs> I have a feeling they're on the counter. I'm not 100% sure, um, but I did think they were on the dash of my truck and they weren't there. So they're, okay. they'll, they'll pop up somewhere. Oh, they're, yeah. my, they're in a pocket. They're on the floor somewhere. <laughs> and somebody's, dra- somebody's drank, maybe. That, uh I know that's happened more than a few times. If you just drop them in there, it's a surprise when you get to hey, the bottom you, of it. You get, it's an easy way to get a, a, a nice uh, beverage at the bar. There you go. Get a, get a rise out of somebody. That's for sure. So, all right. Um, I almost turned myself down too loud. That never happens. So, what out of all – actually, okay, let's start with – with the news, uh, we'll just jump right into it because I know a lot of fans have been asking the update on uh, Nathan Bockwell, how he's doing, where he is. We might as well just start right there off the top of the show. So give us the latest on him. Yeah, uh, Box, uh, typical hockey player, um, shows up to the rink on Monday uh, wanting to uh, practice and and, and uh, play this weekend. And uh, unfortunately, I declined. And I said, hey, listen, kid, I mean, uh, you know, I'd probably want to do the same thing, but, you know, you probably need to take the weekend off, maybe two. Um, But, no, he uh, he ended up – we ended up going to the ER on on Saturday, and, um, you know, everything kind of checked out well, CT scan and uh, all that stuff. And, you know, I think uh, the consensus was broken nose and a few stitches um, and uh, got a little bit of a headache. So, thank God he's he's all right. Unbelievably so. Yeah, it just it boggles my mind how fortunate. Were you on the ice? He is. I mean, well, um, I mean, one, it was in the corner, so anybody on the bench, if you weren't really watching, you, so you couldn't really see. It was a dump in. I was on the back check, and then gained the zone. Puck went over to the opposite corner, Box's corner, and I check up at the point, take a look at the point, look down. Box is just getting hit, but. Right away, the way he fell to the ice, you knew that something was n- not of normal. Right. And uh, rush in there, and immediately uh, what happened on Saturday night started taking place, and there's two guys standing right over top. It's like, get those guys out of there. Yeah. Let's get the training staff on the ice. This was not a normal hockey scrum, which everyone loves seeing. I know that. But this was a more of a serious matter, and... Yeah. Still, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, it's, um, I played a long time. Um, seen a couple incidents like that, but I mean, not to that extent. Um, so, anyways, and and you know, hockey play gone bad. I mean, don't really like like Tyler Bar is the guy that hit him. Um, obviously, I don't think. He had any intentions of that happening and and this and that and tyler's a pretty stand-up guy and, and pretty pretty um honest guy is when, when it comes down to it um but it tends to it still tends to be that you know how that team kind of just plays in general um you know 
carefree and loose and anything kind of goes. And at that point, it's, you know, I don't even know what Especially score. with the lead. Yeah, I don't even know what the score was. 5-1, one, 6-1 one, or uh, at the time. I'm like 8-1. Eight, eight, was it 8-1 eight eight one one. at that point? Uh, well, all right. Well, I mean, even more so. And, and I say that because I played that way carefree and and you know in your face and you know I wanted everybody to make sure that they knew they were playing and um I don't know I'd like to think you know when we're getting I would either have been kicked out already by then <laughs> right um because we were playing that bad and I would have been uh, kicked out saying all right boys I've done my job you guys need to figure it out kind of thing or if I'd still be in there, I'd probably not nearly finishing my checks. Or if I would finish my checks, I'd be yelling, hey, you better get rid of it because I'm coming. I'm going to, you know, whatever. So I, I hate that, and it is what it is. And, uh, again, thank God that uh, that uh, box is all right. And, you know, the I think um, the training staff, our team doctor, the EMS people, um, you know, the – the emergency people at uh, Piedmont, uh, at Midtown were, were great. So, um, you know, we got a, a really good staff when it comes down to it. And actually, uh, our trainers and, and my team doc, we're going to go out for lunch tomorrow and kind of go through the process, go through everything and see if we can streamline anything and this. And I know a few people, and I'm not a big Facebook person, but I know a few people were were, um, were talking about how, the EMA, how it took so long for EMS. Well, EMS is standing in the sedans and and generally they're there to to service the, the fans crowd. the yeah. crowd and you know the ambulance everything is parked outside in a loading dock so it's not like everything is is in the building and ready to go so um at this you know same time i think everything worked out well and uh, it was good and again thank god that uh that uh, box is all right and uh you know he'll have a couple week vacation and ready to go I just think when you're in the moment it feels like things are happening a lot slower, slower yeah. because yep. the intensity of the situation is overwhelming yeah but when you look back you think you know what it was a pretty adequate response for maybe some people that are out of practice yeah and well and and, and, and again it. it's not like you get to practice that it's not like you practice you know Right. You know, right. A, a life-saving procedure kind of thing, you know, whatever. So, um, you know, yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, all in all, um, everything's good. And, you know, when it comes down to it, like, uh, I mean, what uh, what's pretty special um, is when both teams get back on uh, – get back or in a, in a huddle and they're all praying together and, and, you know, at the end of the day, that's more important – puts everything in perspective and life life uh is way more important than any other game and and this and that so that's you know what our that's what this world <laughs> actually someone mentioned it to me know? and the word that stuck with me was humbling mm -hmm. is uh it's such a privilege playing hockey and being a part of it and this and that but something like this goes on and I think everyone even the crowd gets humbled on what a gift life is and also just how fast things can change it's awakening you know so no uh, it's great news to see bulks back and just hungry again and well and then you know to you know so I guess rewind that the whole night everything goes off games called go in the locker room, really not a whole lot to say. I'm like, you know, and I'm like, well, I got to make sure I'm at the hospital. One of my former, uh, one of my former teammates, Tom Wilson is, is a firefighter and he rides the ambulance on the weekend. So I call Willie, Willie, are you, are you, were you, were you on call or were you, were you there? He's like, no, but I'm on the way. I heard that thing. And, you know, uh, earlier on that day, uh, the youth hockey had an incident where a, a kid got uh, banged into the boards kind of, again, from behind and this and that. And, you know, that was the second call to the Columbus Civic Center that weekend or that Saturday. Um, and Willie was actually working that one. So, um, But anyway, so I called him, and he's like, no, I'm down here. And, you know, 
before I got there, some of the guys were already there already. I call him and he was already back there. He's like, listen, he's awake. He's not joking around, but he's awake and coherent. You know, everything's looking good or whatever type thing. So, you know, I got there. I called him. I'm like, hey, listen, you know, his girlfriend's here. I need you to take her or me back there to make sure we're, we're good. He's like, well, you can only have two people in there. I'm like, well, it's me and her right now. And actually, <laughs> people in the hospital kicked all of us out of the out of the lobby. I'm like, you guys can't stay here. You guys got to go, you know, uh, type thing. So, I mean, uh, anyways, it all worked out. But it's always nice to have somebody on the inside to to get you where you be, get past the gatekeeper and all that stuff. So, and uh, at that point, we went back and um, um, Peyton, his girlfriend, I think that's her, her name, uh, was here. Um, she had already been talking to his mom and dad and when we got back there, you know, he was good and he made a phone call to his, his mom and dad or whatever. So that, that's, that was pretty cool. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that everything worked out in a, in a really difficult moment. Um, boy, you hate to have those, but yeah, it, I, I do commend everybody, the first responders and our trainers and just everybody who was there and, and reacted well to the situation or as well as you could. So Definitely want to say kudos to those folks, and and we're we're thankful everything's okay or yeah. is on the road to being okay. I yeah, mean, on the way. It's on, gonna take a way, it's yeah. gonna take a week or two. I know he wants to play this weekend. Oh yeah, he's like, <laughs> you know he was literally sitting on the bench, and you know the doc calls me this morning. He's like, you know he wants to play. I'm like, yeah, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> uh, like, and he does look from yesterday to today. Yesterday he looked terrible. Uh, this morning he looked so much better. Uh, maybe it was because he was able to wash his face and some of the swelling went down. Yeah. <laughs> wash his face a little bit more than what he did, but his sw- the swelling went down a little bit and this and that. So, Good for him. Good, yeah. good. Glad to hear it. Um, let's let's kind of wrap up talking about the weekend a little bit here. Um, I mean, first of all, before everything happened, early in the third period, I mean, it wasn't 8-1 game. So, you know, Columbus taking care of business in that one. I mean, Jam, you had a hat trick going and... Uh, you know, Ryan Hunter had a hat trick going in that one. I mean, things things just seem to be firing pretty well for you guys offensively. You know what? Um, I I think from the start of the year, and this was kind of a thing last year too, we have good starts, and then we think that we're fine, and we take a second period off, and then we have to battle in the third period, and we'll pull out a win. But it gets frustrating, <laughs> right? I think this game, we are finally fed up to our uh, – we got scored on early on the power play from Mississippi – but we responded well, and then we kept coming. We finally had a good second period to where we kept close to our game plan. And then we got to the third, and we continued that with the intention of finishing off the job. And then that's the beauty. I mean, not the beauty, but hockey is such a crazy game. Anything could happen at that point. You never expect what the next play is going to be. So, But, um, no, it was, it was – I'd say it was refreshing – to, like we knew as a team that we could do that all year but yeah it's it's a rock and a hard place you never want to see that happen in the hockey game and that's what trumped everything so right right and i really uh, i don't like eight to one games I, I i like the intensity and and this and that and and you know i'd much rather have a have a two to one game and you know every it's nice to have a uh, Even as a coach, are you saying that as a yeah, coach? Yeah, no. Well, it's nice. No, don't get me wrong. It's nice to have an eight to one game and and have the pressure off kind of thing. But it, it's 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 to me, it's so more gratifying to have the intensity stay here sure. the whole time. Sure. And we're bat. We have to battle for everything you get, and you know this and that. I mean, it's better for us in the long run to go through that now and <clears throat> and through the year than it is. Um, near the end of the year when, when it, it, everything intensifies and you haven't been in that position before and you need it kind of thing. And the difference you know. with our team is, you know, uh, a 5-2 game and an 8-1 game is just a few plays where guys are capitalizing on chances and executing plays where in a 5-2 game guys aren't. And then we keep it close. And then the game intensifies as the game goes on. So, yeah. Well, let's grab our first break. We'll come back. We'll chat a little bit more here in just a moment. We've got head coach Jerome Bichard, and our player guest this week is Alexander Jamayev. Stay tuned. There's more of the Behind the Bench Coaches Show coming your way.
Welcome back on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. Tom Callahan here along with this week's player guest, Alexander Jamev, and as always, head coach Jerome Bichard joining us here. And uh, guys, we didn't even touch on the first game of the weekend against Mississippi, and we're going to see Mississippi again this Friday coming up on the road. And a reminder everybody, to everybody, that's Central Time, so it's an hour later start. What time is that game? Because I was going to... I was going to look at it because I'm trying to figure out what time we have to leave on, on Friday. <laughs> so you know, Preparation every, is everything. You know? I am, I the am, bus is ready, boys. I'm going to pick up the bus tomorrow. Jammer, you can take me out there. We can go pick it up, fuel it up, and ready to go. 7.05 Central Time. 7.05 Central Time. So, so 8.05 Eastern. Right. 7.30 Eastern pregame. So Jammer, when do we have to leave on Friday? Uh, <laughs> 10.30, 11 o'clock. 11 at the latest, 10.30, probably the boys would prefer an extra half And Mississippi's hour. actually at Baton Rouge the night before. So right. that, that doesn't hurt. Yeah. That makes me feel a little better. Well, you know what? I um, I think that's a bonus for Mississippi. One, Mississippi to Baton Rouge isn't very far. What is it? It's like two, two hours. hours. Yeah. So to me, I'd rather, like, I don't think we play well after a week off. Like our, our Friday games usually are slow. You know, the second game's usually a little bit better. So we're going down down there. You know, first game of the weekend, they've already played one. Um, and we're getting off the bus. Right, and we're getting off the bus. So we got to be prepared. But, I mean, uh, at the same time, I'm like, we're fine. We're, 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 we're big boys. We just got to, uh, uh, again, kind of do things in a smart way to get our legs underneath us and get ourselves into that game. And, um, you know, I've been preaching, and I always say it, but – you know, intensity, intensity, intensity. Um, you know, physicality creates intensity. Intensity cr- creates awareness. Awareness makes you be aware. And be better. And as you were saying, too, I mean, going into Mississippi, I mean, they are the onus is generally on the home team, right, to put on a little bit more of a show for the Well, you know what, Mississippi, you look at, uh, you know, Mississippi is a bunch of peacocks at home. Their feathers are out and they're – tail feathers are all up and out they're all you know proud and and trying to jack everybody up and get the crowd going this and that and you know i mean it's tough to do that when you're getting your handed to you all the time so they need to just concentrate on 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 winning games as opposed to trying to bully people get the old tail feathers plucked (laughs) (laughs) i mean in accolades of them, they are one of the more physical teams in our division, and that's why it's it's uh, I enjoy playing them because it's more of an engaging game. Well, and they and they 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 work hard. Like I mean, there's not a team in the league that doesn't work work hard. I mean, um, and work hard, put pressure on people. Like I mean, nobody you know nobody's uh, great under pressure. Pressure. It's whoever can handle the most amount of pressure without coughing the puck up is what's going to win. And uh, I mean, I think for the most part, we're fairly composed when it comes down to that. Um, and you know, so, but yeah, they, they like to run and gun and, and, you know, and, and probably put on a little bit more show as far as physical style at home. Cause I, you know, they were physical here, but nothing like they are in Mississippi, no, nothing like they are at home. The way they play at home is, I, yeah, they're trying to impress the crowd, number one. Number two, they're trying to score goals. So, I mean, uh, yeah, it's about weathering that storm. We need to have a good first period, weather the storm, get our feet under our, uh, under our bodies, and then get back to our game plan as the game goes on. So uh, I enjoy playing them. I think it makes us better, uh, whether it's a close game or we're uh, practicing some things later on in the game. But, uh, no, they have a competitive team, which I which I like, so. And then Saturday we come back home, Blue Ridge, and it's Teddy Bear Toss night. So you guys have any uh, any bets as to who's going to be the, the Teddy Bear Toss goal scorer this year? Anything up on the board yet? You know, I'll throw a little bet out there. I think uh, a guy that's kind of felt his skates well, uh, is really feeling his shot well, is a uh, rookie on our team, Ryan Hunter. I feel like uh, he's not looking behind him so much. He's focused. He's really uh, just playing in front, and uh, the guy's a tremendous skater, and he's got a rip of a shot. So I think uh, just a little bit of fine-tuning from the older guys and uh, just a little bit more confidence. Uh, he's been having a good few weeks. So, yeah, maybe Huntsy, you know. 
Oh, I'm going Dark Horse, Sequoia Swan. <laughs> nice. All right. Dark, yeah. Dark First Dark. goal of the year. His his actually the goal he scored was really nice. Like step forward off the face off and the bar down. Bar yeah, down. it was. It was it was it was real nice. I mean, um and actually Swanner, um probably in a tougher role. I mean, for the amount of ice time he's been getting and and what he's been doing, he tends to do everything pretty really well. He doesn't give up a whole lot. I mean, he finishes his tracks. He hits like a truck. Um, I think he surprises some people when it comes down to it, which is exactly what we need from him. Um, but you know, he's uh, he's got a really he's got a pretty hard shot. He's got a pretty good shot. The thing I love about Swanee is uh, he's not tentative, and in this in this game in this league, if you get if you're tentative, you get picked on, and it shows. Uh, Swanee's not tentative. Uh, he doesn't mind. Uh, contact at all. It actually, he actually prefers it. So, um, yeah, that guy's a bit of an icebreaker. You know, he could go out there and play the same way every shift. Uh, it doesn't matter to him. So, also, I do want to put out the disclaimer: in no way are either one of you partial to players who may have played in the Western Hockey League. I just want that clear. <laughs> just there, there's no preference well, there, no bias. And, well, and you know what? I mean, except I, there is. I, I think. <laughs> I think when it comes down to the lineup, the guys, uh, you know, forwards in particular, I mean, I mean, as far as Swanner goes, I mean, he can he can fill a third line role and a checking guy and a tough guy, and I think he's talented enough. He's talented enough to play with a J Mac uh, in case somebody gets hurt or this and that or J Mac or whoever. Uh, Dozer, Petro might need some protection as a wingman or something like that. You know, um, you know, he's talented enough to to talented and smart enough to to be that uh, to to be that uh, that guy. And and yeah. clear the tracks and clear the for tracks. whoever's there. Yeah. Right. So I mean, that's so. Boom! It sounds like a guy that you could kind of you know, hey, yeah, I got a mold for you. You know. <laughs> I can help you with this. I've been there, done that. You know, and that goes to say about a lot of our young guys this year. It has to do with a bit of a – we have a bit of an older leadership, I'd say. So they're having a pretty good uh, first semester, if you want to call it like that. Nice. But, uh, all right. Also, um, they have uh, – a lot of – all of our young guys have great attitudes, and that speaks volumes. So uh, when you have an attitude, when you have great attitude, you're just more receptive to coaching, to learning, to being a better pro, and – you know, accolades to the young guys on our team, honestly. Jam, I, I want to ask you, too, about, like, your off season and how you prepared coming back into this year. I know that, uh, and, I mean, everybody, like, from Jeff Krupp on down has said, you know, it looks like you spent some extra time in the gym. You've rededicated yourself to coming back stronger, faster, ready to go. Well, um, yeah, I wasn't, in t- well, obviously, for obvious reasons, wasn't happy with our season last year. Uh, we didn't complete our goal. But, um, yeah, I, just, I know that the kind of player I can be, I'm better when I'm stronger, so I kind of spent more time in the gym. Gain a little bit of weight, but also trying to be a little bit uh, more athletic, a little more faster. That's when I'm better. And But also, uh, just I think I'm, mm, I don't know, just playing the game this year. Not forcing, taking what's given to me. I'm not a guy that's going to go end-to-end, but... I'm opportunistic around the net, and uh, it's just it's been working so far this year. And I think we have it. My game stems off hard work. If I'm not working hard, I don't really get much opportunity. So it's uh, it should be the thing with a lot of our guys. Uh, if we're working hard, we're gonna get our chances. Like that's our team identity. You know, it should be hard work first, uh, creativity second, and you know stick to our system and we're going to be successful so well let's grab a break we'll come back with more here in just a moment stay tuned there's plenty more coming your way this is the behind the bench coaches show all right welcome back on the behind the bench coaches show we are here with head coach jerome boom boom b shard and this week's player guest is alexander jamaf talking some hockey here and uh, i i asked you guys so now i kind of want to know the answer here on the record um in in the blue ridge barn 
you either have to, as the home team, you walk down a ramp, you zigzag three times to get to the ice, or you have to walk down a flight of like eight to 10 steps as a visitor. Which would you rather have? The ramp, the longer ramp, or the shorter stairs? Shorter stairs. You're taking the stairs. Yeah, yeah I'll take the steps too. The less, <laughs> the less that we're walking, the better. But <laughs> that's what it goes. To, I mean, that's just the setup of their barn. We right. can't be making excuses. And I mean, it's just a minor detail as far as the whole grand scheme of things is. So. But as we did talk about, I think it was, what, last week's show or maybe the week before, I mean, actually a really nice road dressing room there. Yeah. That's nice. You got plenty of room. You got plenty of room and stuff like that. I mean, 10 times better than Delaware. Um, oh, yeah. You know, kind of the same. I want to – if if and when they get the, the rest of the bowl, if they get more stands in there, I think it'll – be it'll feel with it'll have a little bit more feel of uh, a pro kind of atmosphere and that will probably make things a whole lot better uh in there but i mean without it it, it does feel kind of you know you have to make your own energy and it feels like you know we're playing an inner squad game kind of thing yeah it was kind like a glorified on, on, our, uh, on our practice on our practice ice and you know we have that, a christmas you know. game in my hometown and it kind of felt like that you yeah. know you got half the time um, out. <laughs> but i mean no their yeah. ice was great i will really? like their ice sheet was great yeah hard ice uh the boards are hard the, the boards, boards were are hard, hard and, <laughs> the boards were hard <laughs> took some bad bounces which whatever but anyways yeah so. we uh we had a couple of those develop <laughs> yeah this no, weekend. yeah no we sure did um but i mean we kind of tend to know where they are as well i mean and during the game you kind of forget them but i mean uh um you know you can't take advantage of it and I think uh, you know back to Blue Ridge. I mean, Zemi's done a pretty good job. I think he's he's weed eating weed eating some of his you know guys that maybe he was forced to take because he had nobody, and you know now he actually knows who these guys are and what's going on, and he's kind of put a a, a stamp of of his own on there. I do want to say this. I am I'm going to say I'm pulling for Blue Ridge as a hockey community because I think. Once they do, as you say, improve the stands, and it'll be a better vantage point. But I saw those season ticket holders that were there, and they were really behind the team. Like, that's the start of your community right there. Right. And I just hope it grows for them. You well, know? and I think they need to, you know, be patient and, you know, what, however you want to put it. Like, I mean, um, Zemi's first-year coach, um, you know, and he's making changes. And, you know, I don't know how many home games they've had, but it, it – it you know he's made he's got rid of their captain that was there and uh, a couple things or whatever so he's making a footprint on them and you know um as a guy that's been there and you know one <laughs> i'm here in columbus everyone knows me and you know they know my background so one i have some credibility of of releasing somebody and 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 them saying okay well he knows a little bit more than i do as a fan you got zemi over there they don't know who he is and you got a fan that really doesn't know anything probably about hockey or if they do very probably very few yeah it could get critical you know all they see is you know this guy's getting rid of their captain or whatever and this and that and they don't really know what's kind of why and what's going on so um you know they need to just be patient, and I, I think he put out a uh, a fan letter a, a, a couple of weeks ago, kind of trying to explain what his thought process is and what's going on. So, anyways, transparency goes a long way with fans, though. Yeah, I will say that. Uh, you know, for anybody, him to do that, takes anybody some, wants to talk know. to Boom, my my oh number, my, goodness. my number's right here, seven zero six three six 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 nine zero nine. Um, not only we can we talk hockey, but you can uh, see if uh, you're want to. Sell your house. Yeah, you you want to sell your market. house. You want to buy a house. Maybe some co- boom. You do commercial property too. I do. There you go. See, that guy. He's got it all. There's a reason he gives out the number. It's not. <laughs> it's all over the place. It is. You, know. you, you can, and we can talk you can hockey. You don't. That's you're not right. happy with one of my decisions. Please call me. I'll there you talk go. to you about it. No, I guess the thing is, is they're a hardworking team. And, mm-hmm. You know, uh, we're in close games. So, uh, yeah, no, like you don't want to beat a team eight one every night. Oh, and, as, and and as a league, it's not good. I mean, no. as a league, you're the league is only as good as their weakest team, and and you know we want everybody to be successful and and this and that. And don't get me wrong, I want to beat you, but I mean, I don't want to beat you ten to one every every night. That's not good for the league. And you're not going to go fifty six and zero. No, 
Yeah, you you know that over the course. Of I the want season. to. Sure, everybody does. I got a big bonus if I do. Oh, I bet you. <laughs> I can only imagine. Fifty three, one and two. Fifty three, <laughs> one and two. Yeah. So we got that one out of the way. All right, cool. Now we can just roll. No, I mean, hey, we're gonna have some ups and downs. We're gonna have ebbs and flows, and. Again, uh, stick to the program. More times than not, it's gonna it's gonna work out, um, you know. And you know, with with our group, I mean, it's good to see this weekend pretty much all three lines catching on fire and, and putting it in. And you're gonna have one, you know, for the most part, the way this team is put together. I mean, uh, I would say Petro's line. I rely a little bit more on. Uh, as them playing a little bit more defensive, but they can put the puck on the net. Um, you usually try to have them against the other team's number one line. Um, and then J-Mac and Storrs is your, your line. I'm like, you guys are similar, the same. And, and can I get that matchup that I want with the number one against Petro? Not, not all the time. And sometimes I, I don't. And, and really, uh, I'm more concern of getting the right deep pairing out against those guys more than anything so um and you know everybody's more response everybody's as responsible like up front like i mean i'm i'm blessed with what we have uh, as far as our players right now let's grab one more break here and we'll come back we'll talk a little bit more hockey here it is the behind the bench coaches show <laughs> and this week's player guest alexander jamaev coach boom boom b sharp we'll be right back with more And we are back here on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. Tom Callahan here with you, joined this week by player guest Alexander Jamaff and head coach Jerome Bichard as we're uh, talking a little hockey here and getting a little bit closer to Teddy Bear Toss. And we talked about that uh, earlier, but we also got the ugly sweaters coming up. So we're going to auction those off of proceeds going to benefit the Shrine Club. And uh, that's also a great cause. And you know what? When we always talk about the impact in the community, I know on the ice and the fans, and they love winning the games and all that, but I mean for the guys and getting a chance, like the toy drives, we have a coat drive coming up at WTVM next week, Monday. Uh, we'll talk more about that on the weekend. Oh, but I got a couple doozies this, I can you, probably donate. What, what do you uh, <laughs> Are, are we talking like a Reg Dunlop uh, no, leather coat with the fur trim here? Uh, no, not quite. Well, close. I have a vintage vintage leather bomber uh moose jaw warrior triple a midget uh wow it's really nice <laughs> i think you need to hold on to that yeah no that's what am i gonna that's do a collector it? what am i gonna do with it my kids don't want it um it doesn't we, fit it doesn't quite fit me anymore <laughs> we could we could auction it for charity you know there you go. always do that too. anyways no i mean uh someone yeah. buys a house from you they could hang in their home <laughs> Anyways, it's pretty funny. But yeah, no, I mean, hey, time of the year. I mean, every time, every every day of the year probably needs to be a somewhat of a giving or whatever. And there's so many people in this world that uh, need help, whether it's big, small, time, caring, whatever. It goes a long way. So um, even more so at this time of the year. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I will say, uh, you know, our organization doesn't really mess when it comes to a specialty jersey nights but uh this year uh, especially hearing from the boys our jerseys look great this year they're pretty simple but a little christmas touch on the sleeves is uh just it's a nice touch and yeah it's going to be a fun night uh i know that we're going to be are you pressing. saying the christmas jerseys are nice or are they ugly i mean it's no they're like i a, think they're nice they're <laughs> they're simpler are they naughty or nice i don't <laughs> think I, I don't think I, I, I don't think i've seen them i don't know they're basically they're kind of the reds with uh, the Christmas lights on the sleeves. I think it, they're simpler. They're Griswold, a Griswold, the Griswold lights on the sleeve. Uh, the old fashioned ones <laughs> eh, that used to fall down on the ladder trying to put the on the Italian your house. twinkle lights on the sleeves. There you go. That's uh, they're no longer Christmas lights now. They're Italian twinkle lights. That's it. That uh, you know I, they do. And now that the design of the jersey is out there, people have had a chance to see it. And I mean, it's it is pretty darn good. I do enjoy it. And I, like I say, we're going to auction them off and uh, benefits going to the Shrine Club. So I don't know. I think whoever, though, whoever sends the Bears flying, that, that jersey right there, it's got to be your, your Sequo Sequoia Swan. It's my dark. So one. that Sequoia Swan jersey is going number one overall. Yeah. I mean, I'll stick with my initial say. I'll say Hansi, but Tom? I still think. Uh, 
Yeah, I haven't made a pick yet, huh? Um, let's see here. I'm gonna go off the board. I'm gonna go with uh, Shinks. I think Shinkarik. Gonna call the bomb That's from nice. the point. Or just an end to end classic. Yeah, Shinx. well, yeah, it could be. Could be. He had a his goal the other night was real nice. Where he crossed over, threw it through the defenseman, the wrist shot. Shepard, no clue. Uh it's, um I would say he's one of the better he's one of the best skaters on our team. He has that ability to take two crossovers and automatically change the outlook of a play. So um yeah, it's with Shanks is he's an unbelievable talent. It's picking his spots and executing plays. He's an absolute, absolute asset to our team and uh, unbelievable skater. He's got a rip of a shot, and I, it's it's so great to see him get rewarded on a night like that, especially an icebreaker goal. I feel like icebreakers are very important uh, goals of the game, especially for our team. I feel like it's like, okay, now we go. Where if we get too long without scoring, we second guess ourselves, we get off our game plan, we start stretching too much, and it changes the outlook of a game, we'll keep teams in it, to where if we stick to our game plan and find a goal early, then off the races. Yeah, it's nice to see uh, Shinks get rewarded. Um, and <laughs> He's fun to watch. That little guy. You're a fan. That guy just works so hard, more times than not, for no reason. And, <laughs> and you know, I mean, I think we talked about it last week. So him and Ryan Gill are deep pairings, and they are so yin and yang. Like, I mean, they are uh, totally, but it were, it works. totally different. And, and, again, I and I tell them about to each other, I'm like, listen, Shinks, I need you to have a little bit of gilly. I need you to have some poise and just – you know, be lazy, and Gilly's not lazy, but he's got very, he's got... Reserved. Very reserved. <laughs> he's got ice in his veins, and he doesn't really get rattled or this and that, right? And, and you know, Shanks is, you know, hopped up on caffeine and ready to go <laughs> and 100 miles an hour all over the place, and I need him to be three hard strides to get out of trouble and then slow down to evaluate to see where the play is where and then I need Gilly just to take those two hard strides and get himself up and going as opposed to being patient well look Friday night you know Gilly uh yeah, yeah. takes his ice on that big goal that we had Dozer scored uh yeah Gilly was the root of that play uh walked down the wall with a lot of poise kept his feet moving uh cut to the middle he had ice and a, a well, puck on net and, and a good rebound, a good guy going in the net, and, and there as, you go, right? As far as, as far as our D go, I, I'm like, I want – they need to take ice. They don't need to take ice for without a purpose. Like, I mean, one, skating, jammers open on the wall, give it to him, it's there. He's coming up around the net. He's not there. You have open ice? take it if you don't see anybody that's where i need you to take ice keep going but that does not mean i want you to go end to end that means i go till you get confronted usually somebody's going to pop up and and become open because you're changing the lane and this and that and uh, where shinks gets himself in trouble was he goes and then he then he's he's just gone and he's going to go you know and that's fine every now and then but more time I'd say 75% when he does that, he skates himself into trouble and, and somebody surprises him and then we turn it over and it's coming back this way. So that, that give and go that, you know, just go until you, until you need to and you don't have to be going 100 miles all the time. Uh, I mean, but uh, that's a perfect example with Gilly taking ice and, and doing that. And um, it's all timing and, and this and that. So it's, it is kind of funny that those two are paired together, which is why they're paired together. Um, and you know, you know, so they can learn from each other. You know, it's interesting to look at the D pair and it's almost, Boomer, this is a reference for you and I, and maybe some of the listeners, but the odd couple, it's like Felix and Oscar, oh, yeah. you know, they shouldn't work together, but sometimes you have to put those two guys together to see if they are going to work together. Right. You know, if the odd couple really does work itself out. And I think that that's almost what finding a D pair is like. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. And then really, like, I mean, you know, uh, again, we talked about it, my ultimate, D pairings all the way down is, you know, a Carter Shinkarik with a, you know, big tree guy that, you know, 
It's just good enough to make a pass off the glass and out. Somebody simple. My job is to get the puck over to him so he can make a good play or just, you know, just simple. Bang, bang, you know, all the way down the line. That way, you know, shut down guys and this and that. So, um, and we're getting close to where we need to be on that. All right. So, Jam, I'm going to ask you this question. You can't pick yourself. And then, boom, I'll ask you. But best shot on the team? Oh, well. As far as hardest? Or, or no, just, just I'll, best, I'll, best I'm, shooter. This is my question. I'm going to answer this. I want to say <laughs> Justin. Okay. J-Mac, obviously. Justin McDonald. Uh, he uses a flat blade. He shoots no the puck at all. He uses he shoots the puck off the heel of his stick, and it's mm -hmm. accurate because of that. Okay. Um, second, I, I mean, as far as our release go, Ryan Hunter's got a great release. He pulls the puck into his body, and it's a bullet, and that's why he's been successful lately. Is because he's kind of picking his shots more and shooting more conservatively, low, than trying to go bar down every every single shot. And then you have a guy like, uh, I would say, Petro. He uses an absolute hook, <coughs> but he shoots the puck on net with intention. And that's what other guys can learn from Josh is shooting with intention. Josh shoots for a rebound or a goal, and it's on net most of the time. And it creates a rebound. It creates a chance. It creates pandemonium, chaos, whatever you want to call it. So... Uh, yeah, we got a bunch of guys that could put the puck in good spots. I mean, J Max, a great player, and but it's nice to see young guys having success, and then the old guys kind of showing the way. So, yeah. All right, boom, take it any direction. Oh boy, um, yeah, hunchy has got a uh, you know the the new new school the new school sh shot wrist shot. I mean probably use a 65 flex stick and whatever. I mean, I don't know what he uses, but uh, I'm sure it's not more than 75, um, which, you know. Which, to explain that to people, that is the more flex right. as opposed to some guys using 85, 95, whatever. Right. So, you know, obviously he has a wicked shot like that. And, you know, uh, again, uh, it doesn't take much to, you know, have the goalie uh, get off his angle and, you know, you start the puck out here and you bring it in and then you – zip it from inside your body and you're zipping it you know across across grain or this and that like i mean hunty definitely has that um you know j mac old school slap shot kind of guy i mean uses kind of my <laughs> blade of a stick more of a not much of a not much of a curve but a, a heel a heel angle with a little bit of a upshoot uh, type thing or whatever it was mine and pretty similar and I mean you can just with that how that your stick is kind of angled and you know you can really zip it uh, if if you turn your if you turn your wrists over and really direct where it's going kind of thing and and he does have pretty accurate shot and then really like I mean with him having a flat stick I mean, he reminds me of one of my other captains, uh, Craig Stahl, Stahlzy, <laughs> wood stick. When I say flat, flat. Like, I mean, he can shoot both ways, forehand, backhand. Like, I mean, he had a backhand slap shot that I've never, ever seen before in my life. <laughs> like, just great. Like, seriously. That's wild. And I'm like, and he's a right-handed shot, and he's going to the net. I'm like, oh, watch this, boys. He's going to go to his backhand. I mean, he's got an unbelievable forehand shot. And he's coming, coming. No, he's pulling to his backhand all day long. I'm like, why do you do that? Well, just um, another guy I'm kind of thinking off of the top of my head is Morrissey. He he's puts a, a lot of weight he's into his a, shot. He's got a heavy shot. And it's a it's a rock. So, like. Yeah. Morrissey's uh, got a heavy shot. We're getting Morrissey to shoot more. He's going to be successful. Like he's got a head. He doesn't shot, need so. to shoot because he's so dangly. He can he can <laughs> inside outside guy all day uh, long. The sarcasm's let's, coming out. Let's yeah. Uh, yeah. let's kind of come in on the inside. Like no, no, I got the best shot on the team. I don't want to do that. I want to deke somebody. Morrissey's got a rip. He needs to let it go. <laughs> it was it was like I said. It was like we were doing on <laughs> today on the. On the TV show, are talking about her power play. Yep. You know, just, you know, I'm talking, I'm talking on a TV show about how we need to zip things around and this and that. And I'm like, no, we want to 
move the puck slowly <laughs> across the blue line as opposed to we want to bang, 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 zip it, type of thing. Anyways. Yep. And that's, I mean, sometimes we go tick, tack, toe, tack, tick, tack, toe, <laughs> tack, tick. And then. <laughs> yes, most definitely. But anyways, we're, hey, you know what? When it's uh, when it's time, when it's time, we'll be we'll be revved up and we'll be we'll be uh, well oiled and greased and ready to go. Well, it'll be an awful lot of fun. So, just for you guys, so you know, when the bus needs to be there, uh, it's seven o five Central Time on Friday in Mississippi, uh, which is eight o five Eastern. And so then uh, we're coming back home. So it's going to be a great night, and I'll tell you all about it. Teddy bear toss, ugly sweater, bunch of other things going on. Stay tuned. But in the meantime. Boomer, Jammer, thanks for joining me tonight. Always a pleasure, Kelly. All right, absolutely. We'll be right back to wrap things up here with more in just a moment on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. All right, back to wrap things up here on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. Thanks for joining us, and I want to say thanks once again to my player guest, Alexander Jameev, and, of course, head coach Jerome Boom Boom B-Sharp for being here. Now, again, 7.05 p.m. Central Time next week as we are headed to Mississippi to take on the Seawolves and then back home. The 16th, mark your calendar. It is Teddy Bear Toss Night. It is Ugly Sweater Night. It is Scout Night, and it is Family Four Pack Night. Check this deal out. Only through the River Dragons office. You can only get it through our office, so you got to come down this week and get it. But for $40, and I'll say only $40, you get four tickets to the game. You also get four Pepsi products, four hot dogs, four popcorn, and four coupons for Chick-fil-A sandwiches. You cannot beat that deal. All for $40. It's over $100 in value. Call the office if you want. You can get it over the phone, 706-507-GOAL. That's 706 507 Four six two five, or you can stop by the River Dragons office. We are located down in the Civic Center on the west side in the courtyard between the practice rink and the main building. Nine to five, we are open Monday to Friday, and we would love to see you come down as well. And when you come down, you can also stop by, check out some of the merch. We have the new fifth anniversary merchandise in stock. That's right. We have hoodies. We have long sleeve tees. We have short sleeve tees. We have all kinds of fun stuff going on with the fifth anniversary merchandise. So we hope you can join us and uh, check that stuff out as well. It will be at the game on Saturday, but quantities, as they always are, are limited. Same thing with the jerseys we have in stock right now. If you're thinking about picking something up for Christmas, I'm telling you now is the time. They are online at rdragonsmerch.com. That's r dragonsmerch.com. If you purchase online, we can hold it for you to pick up. If you need to ship it, we can, although with the holidays approaching, I would suggest you might want to put a move on that because, you know, around Christmas, everything takes a lot longer to get where it's going. So just want to give you the heads up there. And finally, we do have gift cards available now at rdragonsmerch.com. Digital gift cards, instant email delivery, or we now have physical gift cards to give as well. So check that out, rdragonsmerch.com. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate you all being here and look forward to talking to you on Friday night from Mississippi, 7.05 p.m. Central, 8.05 p.m. Eastern for the puck drop. And that means a 7.30 Eastern time Air Force Heating and Air pregame show. This has been the Behind the Bench Coaches Show.